if the motive fluid going through the turbine has two opportunities to expand, once in the nozzle and then once through the spiral pathway, if it's still expanding through this through the spiral passageway, there's what's known as the reheat factor. With the fluid moving faster than the discs at the tips as it comes in, there is a heat that's generated from the viscous friction and even just friction within the casing. That heat generated can still further be reutilized and recouped through that spiral section as the fluid continues to expand. What that means is if we get heat that's still being generated inside the turbine that is possible for expansion, imagine if the discs were radioactive. So just the discs generated the heat. You don't need a boiler reactor on the side. Turbine is the reactor. Why do you think they always want to run around and get all the discs? Anyone of these plane crashes, if they ever have one go down, they race to get the discs. Because those discs are radioactive. Bob Lazar talks about how you have to cut them at a special angle. It's usually because you grow high-end turbine parts from single crystals and machine them down from that. Single metallic crystals. So we're, what that means is, I don't know quite enough metallurgy to fully explain this, but I have to imagine there's just some sort of radioactive metal. Heck, you could probably even just use all the waste stainless steel that's just radioactive after being used in a regular nuclear reactor. Anyway, <laughs> basically you make special radioactive, uh, just, let's just go special single crystal uranium discs that go inside of a special design casing that works as a control rod. You can make this work in any number of ways where either like clamshells further over top of the casing that closes on it and the more you close the clamshell on it the more the turbine just keeps spinning up because it just starts heating up and if you need to slow down you pull the clamshell moderator off of it oh my god i can literally think of the demon core just on top of the turbine you want it to go faster you close the core you want it to go slower i have no idea sir but if we don't open the irons the next thud we hear will be close the irons close the irons But then also for the discs, we're going to grow them in the single crystal, have the crystalline structure being in a certain angle on the full growth. And when you cut your discs, you got to cut them along that one angle on the crystal that's being grown. It might have the highest tensile strength along that axis of the crystalline structure, or the crystalline metallic lattice. Regardless, it makes it super cool, radioactive hot discs. They are the heat. You can just push fluid in. If it spans on the way out, it'll get power out. Element 115 was what we would call the fuel, what provided the power for the reactor to work. Element 115 produces its own energy. It had a very specific manufacturing technique. Um, its code name was LA-1000. That's what it was referred to off-site. Its purpose was supposed to be, again, this is just a code and deception was supposed to be an advanced armor. So it's an unusual material. So now we can take it to a national lab. This is LA 1000 classified material. It's a very advanced armor that takes care of all weird questions. So, you know, you immediately start operating on lies. This fuel is somewhat copper in color, you know, that, reddish, brownish. The way this is manufactured is really critical. It's not just cut out of a heavy sheet of material. Lanolin? You got a cheater like a lady. Lanolin? Like, like sheep's wool?
car on water and hydrogen fuel cells and so on. You're running your car on hydrogen. You can't run a car on water. But you're using water. Right. You use water as the source material. You run electricity through it, mm -hmm. and it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen, and then you can burn the hydrogen. All right, so you found a way to store a lot more hydrogen in hydrate. It's the equivalent of a full tank of gas. You want to fill up your car. How much hydrate do you need? Well, I'll show. No way. Yeah, that's the volume it takes to store enough hydrogen to propel this car close to 400 miles. Just about what it gets running on a full tank of gas. Wow. And it's a lot safer than gasoline. Really? Yeah, these tanks can be shot at with incendiary bullets or cut in half with a chainsaw. And you can throw a match on them, they just smolder like a cigarette. And I can't say that about a gas tank. Now, if you store hydrogen with just compressed gas in a tank, it certainly explodes, yeah. catch on fire. Here, only the hydrogen that you need is released from the tank. When the tank's heated, it produces hydrogen, and the car burns it. So there's never much gaseous hydrogen in the system at any given time. Wow. This provides power to the heater in the tank, and also reads back the temperature of the tank. Why is that important? Well, when you apply heat to hydride, it releases hydrogen. So as oh. power is applied to here, it heats the hydride, right. and then the gas comes out, the big hose is on the end. Yeah, you have four hoses, do they all mix into one big hose or yeah. something? Because you can only get hydrogen out of hydride at a certain rate with a certain temperature. And a single tank, you can't get it out at the volume you need. So you really just split it into four smaller units, heat them separately, and it works just fine. Now behind me, Bob is getting ready to blow something up. Bob is blowing up water. Well, okay, he's not blowing up water because as he said, to say you're powering your car on water is the same thing as saying that you're running your car on gasoline, you're powering your car on dinosaurs, and we know this means. Um, this is what? This is a Hoffman apparatus. And it's used to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. For fun, just because it's cool. Well, if you just have it used for hydrogen and oxygen or for demonstration purposes, it works just perfect. All you gotta do is fill it with water. That's just regular water, right? Well, actually, water with a little citric acid, potassium hydroxide, anything like that. The more conductive you make the water, the faster hydrogen will come out. And each one of these sides is supposed to be hydrogen and oxygen. Right, one will be hydrogen will bubble up out of one and oxygen will bubble up out of the other. Remember, water is H2O. Right. So when we break the bond of water apart, we'll get twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen. Oh, and there'll be more on this side? Yes. And that's the hydrogen side. Exactly. And that's the negative. Oh, so it matters which way you hook these up. So you got to hook a positive to what is the positive going to make. The positive will make up the oxygen. And oh. the negative will make oh, no the hydrogen. Okay. So we've just connected it there. Right. And just by turning it on, you can see bubbles start pouring up out of there. Yes. Seven up. <laughs> yeah. So those bubbles are, well, they're not the same. So these are hydrogen bubbles and those are oxygen, oxygen bubbles. bubbles. Right. And there's, this is wider. There's more of them. Right. Well, you can see it's really. Why is there more? Oh, H2. Two. Two. Oh, all right. There's twice as much. Hey, that actually makes sense. So I'll close it off so it saves. Right. Seals the gas in, and right. then you'll see it'll start filling up. Oh, we could you don't have to go away overnight. Do this is what we're watching. Yeah, it'll be relatively quick. And what we'll do mm -hmm. is take a little sample of the hydrogen gas mm -hmm. and light it. Right. You can see. What are, I mean, what are these? You just have electrical current going to a. Piece it's a piece of, of well, it's a piece of platinum foil, and the reason you need platinum in there is because that's it's very corrosive to a metal for electrolysis to occur. I mean, it's really ripping the atoms of the metal apart, but platinum is highly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a slow method. Right. And you know, it, it consumes a fair amount of electricity. Now, mm -hmm. if the electricity is being produced from solar panels or a wind mm -hmm. generator, it doesn't cost you anything, so who cares? But still, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours to refill mm -hmm. a vehicle. You want something that can produce hydrogen at a fairly quick rate. So let's go ahead and extract some of this. Okay. Let's look at that. Wow. So there's power of hydrogen. Well, there's a standard gasoline fill, but also there's a hydrogen in it, which you just click on, leave it on overnight, and as the generator makes hydrogen, it compresses it in there at a nice slow rate, and the tanks become full over a period of about eight hours or so. There are little points here and there that do have to be addressed. I mean, when it comes right down to it, you don't want fuel tanks inside the vehicle. This is a prototype, so ideally, eventually, you'd want the tanks outside, just like a fuel tank is. The second thing is, you're dealing with an unusual gas, hydrogen not only is lighter than air, but also it burns with an invisible flame and is completely odorless, which is not a good thing. Now, propane is odorless too. They add a, uh, you know, that pretty strong scent to it. And you can't really do that with hydrogen because if you add any kind of chemical to it, the hydride has a problem storing it. It can poison the hydride and lose its ability to hold hydrogen. So that's something that needs to be addressed. You have a hydrogen leak and somehow the gas is getting in the car, you'd never know. And it could accumulate in the car, you go to light a cigarette, there could be an explosion in a case like that. So um, you need things like a, right. a hydrogen gas detector, so it'll let you know if there is a hydrogen leak. But I mean, it's it's still an extremely safe system. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is going to $5 a gallon. Right. It's awesome. terrible. The whole country's falling apart. We're you know, killing people all over the world for oil. And, and this, you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it. And you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems. But yeah, essentially, well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself. Right. 
one of the main components of it, is classified as a weapon material. And it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons. And because, if, even though it's not a dangerous and right. material explosive right in by itself, right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof, but um, because it's used in those, it can't be used for any other civilian purposes. So, you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it. You made it? Yeah, we made it. But isn't, isn't that, don't you need big particle accelerators and Yeah, things? so that was the, the one loophole. You can make the material, you can't buy it, so... Where's the particle, you have a particle accelerator? Yeah, so all you have to do is build a particle accelerator and you can make all the hydride you need. The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank, that hydride material. Right. And, there, and the reason you can't is because... It's, it's a weapon material. But there's nothing dangerous about it. No, no, it's it just won't used blow up. a weapon. Right. Well, beryllium's used in a weapon, too. You know, right. Basically, this whole thing boils down to how you store the hydrogen. So we found a metal. We have a material that we can store the hydrogen in. We have a material we can safely store hydrogen in. And a sufficient quantity to replace the gas tank on a car. So we can provide enough hydrogen to drive a car as you normally would. Use green energy to make the hydrogen, either solar or wind power. There's a medium to store it in. That's it. Both problems are handled. All the other little bells and whistles can be taken care of in time, but the basic system works. It has for a long time. Wow. That's it. Yeah. If we had just a fraction of what the oil companies are, are wallowing <laughs> if we in had right the, now. the budget of one day in Iraq, this entire system would be available to everybody.